storyteller, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to have a black friend. It's <laughs> <laughs> really important. Um, I believe that ebony ivory relationships are very important, super healing. I think the more ebony ivory relationships that we have in the world, it's going to make the world a much better place. Um, and I love white people. Uh, some of my best friends are white people. <laughs> it's true. My man is white. Um, he's super white, actually. He played lacrosse in college. <laughs> he wears flip flops in unseasonably cool weather. Um, checks all the boxes off. And I grew up with a lot of white people and had a lot of seamless friendships with them. But as I got older, I think I. I met, I've met a lot of white people who don't seem to have grown up with black people and, and don't really seem comfortable and um, it makes it challenging to have a connection with them. So I really want to help. So I'm going to give you guys some lessons, some of the white people in the room. Are there any? Do we have any? Um, I give you guys some lessons on how to have a black friend. Uh, so first of all, first lesson, feel free to write it down or get out your iPhones. Um, do not bring up black issues or your opinions on them too soon in the friendship. So don't be like, hey Andrea, it's really nice to meet you. Um, I think slavery was awful. <laughs> Middle passage, terrible. Not a boat trip I'd ever want to go on. And I totally support Colin Kaepernick all the way. <laughs> Don't do that, that's too soon. Um, bringing up your opinion on black issues too soon in a friendship is like being on a date and taking your dick out too soon. <laughs> it's off-putting, um, it's jarring, <laughs> and no matter how great it is, nobody wants to see it. Um, yeah, it's like, and even when you put it back, it's all anybody's thinking about. <laughs> They're like, why did that happen? I wish we could go back to the time before that happened. Um, so, you know, I have white friends that I've had for like 15, 20 years, and we've never talked about black issues. Um, I know that they believe that black lives matter because they've shown me over time that my life matters to them, and that's all I care about. So maybe you're wondering, like, when do I bring up my opinion on black issues? When a black person asks you to. So if I say, Chad, what do you think about the black female age gap? At that point, Chad, you should take out your big, beautiful, strong opinion and shove it in my face. <laughs> And if I never ask you for it, never take it out. Just shove it. Maybe even make me beg for it. Like, give it to me. <laughs> give it to me, Chad. Tease me. No, I'm not going to give it to you. No, please. Um, that's number one. Second lesson. Um, friendship points with one black person does not transfer to the other black person. <laughs> To, to meet you. Uh, just so you know, I have a lot of black friends at work. They love me. They say I'm cool. They say I'm down. Uh, to them, I'm like basically another black person. <laughs> so that means you and I are going to be really good friends. Don't do that. Um, first of all, I don't know the black people at your job. <laughs> and even if I did, the friendship points do not transfer. I can't use Delta Sky Miles points at American Airlines. You have to earn your black friendship points with me just like you did with the people at your job and just like you do with white people. There's no difference. <laughs> Lesson number three, and this one, this is the biggie. Um, you cannot have the pleasure of black friendship without the pain. Mm. Oh, I got it. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. Um, so I was like best friends with this white girl. We were thick as thieves. We had so much fun together, laughing, playing, dancing, shopping, like all the fun stuff, all the fun stuff. Then we went to an improv comedy show here in Manhattan. 
And I was pretty much the only black person there. Uh, there were, there was maybe some brown people in the audience, but like mainly me as a black person, no black people on stage. So this white male performer gets on stage and starts talking about uh, ghetto, ghetto black kids. So I um, didn't like it. Sidebar, I don't like it when white people use ghetto as an adjective. Right. Yeah. Not, not every black person feels that way, but obviously some do. <laughs> I'm one of them. Um, we can talk about it later. But back to the story. So I didn't like it that this guy said this. I got pissed off, so I shouted something from the audience. Um, it wasn't profanity. I don't remember exactly what I said. Maybe it was a huh, or a what, or a sustained, I don't know. <laughs> I was triggered and I said something. Um, and then they were like, shh, no talking in the audience. And then the show continued. But then after the show, my white friend said to me, Andrea, that was really embarrassing for me. Um, and I don't want to go out in public with you if you're going to act like that every time you're racially offended. <gasps> so we stopped being friends. <laughs> you know? That is not the way to have a black friend. You cannot have the pleasure of a black friendship without the pain. That doesn't mean that like we're always going to be going off on something. But like if we go off, you have to support us. That is what friendship is. You can't have the fun of the hey girl, hey, without the fears of the hey girl, hey. <laughs> you have to have both because if you just have the fun, that's the token black guy in a TV show. Mm -hmm. And you, that's not friendship. And I want you all to have a friendship with black people. So. To finish it up, white people, if you want to have friends that are black, basically just treat us like we're white. And um, then when the topic of race comes up, pretend like you're Harvey Weinstein before a grand jury and uh, be on your best fucking behavior. Okay? Thank you so much.